What's going on guys, Joe with Buffalo Bob. And I just wanna let you guys know in advance that my wife and I are going away tomorrow afternoon as of March 7th to Florida and we're going on a cruise. So we're gonna be out in the sea in the middle of nowhere and then on our way to the Bahamas. So if you don't hear from me throughout the entire week regarding NFL news or NHL news or maybe even MLB for all I know, um, Chances are I'm going to be away and I will not respond to any trade videos until the following week after the deadline. So just want to let you guys know in advance, I will post a video about deals that will be made, but just a heads up, I will be in Florida. So if you don't hear from me, I'm going to be spending time with my family and we'll go from there. So with that being said, let's get down to it. So there's been a lot of chatter lately about the Buffalo Sabres with Casey Middlestad. And Casey Middlestad's name has been brought up in trade rumors as of late. And there's been speculation that the Sabres have a choice. They can either sign him to a long-term deal because he has an RFA coming up this offseason or to save them some cap, trade him. So there's been a lot of chatter about this topic. And there's been rumors about Middlestad to the Flyers. There's been Middlestad rumors to the Kings and all that. So there was rumors that he was going to get traded. But I was under the impression that he was going to get traded to the Flyers. That's not true at all anymore. So there has been chatter that if they were going to trade him, that they would have want maybe a top four defenseman for him. And I think that's a pretty fair ask in terms of what the asking price is from Buffalo's perspective. So in return of all this, the Sabres ended up trading Casey Middlestad. But it, it's not the team that you would think. It's not Philly. It's Colorado. So let me tell you who Buffalo got in the deal. So the Buffalo Sabres ended up trading Casey Middlestad to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for a defenseman, Bowen Byram. What? Bowen Byram? Holy crap, dude. Look, I have nothing against Bowen Byram. I think he's a good defenseman. He had has he has had health issues early on in his career, but He'd be a top four pairing defenseman on the Sabres, and he would get a much bigger role on the Buffalo Sabres. But I think it's unfair to say that he's been overshadowed because he is playing with two pairing defensemen at that point, with Kale McCarr, who is a Calder Trophy winner, a, Vez um, a Consumite Trophy winner, a Stanley Cup champion, a Norris Trophy winner, etc., etc., etc. The guy's a future Hall of Famer at 25 already. It's insane. And then the other pairing is Devin Taves. Devin Taves is another player that you know, was paired with McCarr, and they're a pair. So Byron was out the door at that point. And the thing about Byron is that he's still young. He's 22 years old. He was a former fourth overall pick in the NHL draft. I think it was in 2018 where he was drafted, if I remember correctly. And the next thing you know, <laughs> he's gone. He's going to Buffalo. And the dude's got a Stanley Cup ring already. Uh, the only the only knock on Byram is that he has health issues and he has had a handful of concussions. So I'm hoping that he stays healthy. I don't know if he would be a good fit long term, but I like the projection uh, the projection that they're getting for him. So you have him paired up with Rasmus Dahlin and Owen Power, and then you have Bowen Byram and then Ryan Johnson down the middle. So really, they're still building a young team. So in all honesty, I was genuinely surprised. That when I heard the news from Kevin Weeks on Twitter, he was the first person to mention that Middlestad was going to get traded. And he ended up getting dealt to the Avalanche. And now people are going to ride on this narrative of Buffalo giving up players to other teams like Sam Reinhardt, Jack Eichel, Ryan O'Reilly, blah, 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 blah. We all know how this comes about. They either went to a Stanley Cup Finals or having a breakout year or they win Stanley Cups. We get it. Casey Middlestad is probably going to end up on this list at some point and it's just going to be a trend for buffalo it's just what they do i don't understand why there's no way i can control that because i don't work for the damn team i wish i did and i wouldn't have to worry about this shit but unfortunately there is a situation and there is a place where casey middle's dad was just not going to be in buffalo anymore and this does leave the door open for peyton krebs to prove himself if he whether or not he can prove that he could score more goals now that middle is out of the picture and then have him get a bigger uh, role on the offense, and then have Byram being as a top pair of defenseman. I do wonder who he's going to pair with, because we don't really know anything yet. And I don't expect him to play tonight, because the Sabres play the Leafs on TNT. 
So I'm not expecting Byram to play tonight. I do expect him to play in their next game, which I'm not sure when it is. I want to say it's like March 7th. I'm not really sure. I have to look at the schedule. But I do know for a fact they play Toronto tonight. So, yeah, this is going to be a very, very interesting situation. And the nice thing about Byron's deal is that they has two years remaining on his deal. And I think he's making under $5 million. And he's three years younger than Middlestat. So that's a huge get for Buffalo right now. Because Darlene's like 22, 23. Power's like 21, 22. And then Byram is 22, 23. So these are three young guys that they can build their team around. Which is very fascinating to me. Because I know Kevin Adams has said in the past that he's wanted to get aggressive at the trade down line. And I'm fine with it, but it has to make sense. But again, this is both a shitty thing to do and probably the best thing to do, you know, in terms of financial situations. Because the Sabres gave out $7 million last year to five players, and they were given out like candy, like Samuelson, Power, uh, Thompson, Cousins, you name it. Why didn't they give one to Middlestad? Probably because they probably thought that he wasn't worth the $7 million. Plus, the dude has never reached 20 goals in the NHL in his career. And he's been with the Sabres since 2017. So he's still a young kid. So I really don't understand why people are under the impression that they were going to give him $7 million, even though that's what he demanded. I wouldn't be surprised if he got more than that in Colorado, considering that the Avalanche needed some scoring help. And this is a good fit for him. And I think he's going to thrive on Colorado. You know, they're, they're contenders for the cup again. They just won the Stanley Cup two years ago. So this is really nothing new. They're trying to go all in. So this is not the only move that Colorado made. So they basically got rid of Byram, and they bring in Sean Walker from the Flyers, and they also um, get Middlestad, and then they get rid of Johansson in the process. So I'm not going to go into all that, but as far as I know, Colorado is really going deep for a cup run again, and with that core that they got going on, it's possible, but we'll see what happens. So what do you guys think of this deal? Do you think that Byram's going to pan out to be the fourth overall pick like he was projected to be? Like, he is a good player. I'm not taking that away from him. And then, do you think Middlestad will be the next Sam Reinhardt or the next Ryan O'Reilly? We'll, we'll see where it goes. So, with that being said, I'll talk to you guys later, and I'll see you when I get back from Florida.